glory to God who has given us this day, and this is a wonderful day. And if you belong to him, you can be rest assured that he will take you through life with his peace. When Jesus was going away, he said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. As a matter of fact, the world has no idea of what is God's peace. But when he gives you, you can live your life comfortably in this world. Today we are going to read 1 Samuel chapter 23. We are reading verses 26 to 28. 1 Samuel 23, 26 to 28. Then Saul went on one side of the mountain, and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. So David met Hest to get away from Saul, for Saul and his men were encircling David and his men to take them. But a messenger came to Saul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistines. So they called that place the Rock of Escape. The Rock of Escape. God, Jesus, that's your Rock of Escape. David was encircled. He has no way to go out. David had 500 men. Saul had thousands of soldiers. The select brigade, he was going with them, looking for David. And David didn't really have an army. A ragtag group of people who were discontented with society, people who had no homes, people who had no jobs. In fact, the dregs of society. Those are the kind of persons that attach themselves to David. Did he have a choice? He didn't. Sometimes life places you in a position that you don't have a choice. You wouldn't like this company, but that's your company. But anyway, never mind that David turned them into mighty men of valor. That's not the issue for now. But the fact is that this small company of persons were encircled completely. They were on top of a mountain. And here is all coming. Where will you go? You jump down from the mountain. There was no way for them to go, but God sent a deliverer by the hand of the Philistines who invaded the land, and Saul had to hurriedly go back. Because if he's pursuing David and the Philistines invade the land, he has lost the kingdom. David, as far as he was concerned, was small fly, so it didn't matter. I'll come back to him later. Let me go and finish with the Philistines. But that was the moment of deliverance. Your moment of deliverance is now, no matter how you have been encircled. There are things that encircle us in life. You find yourself in the prison of life. Some of us, that we go through that thing, series of them, you're always in a prison, especially in the dreams. You're always in a forest. You're always in a house that has no doors, no windows. How you got there, you don't know. You are locked up completely. And you know that the next thing is destruction. Some people wake up and just thank God that they have seen the day because of the kind of things they experience even while they sleep. But for you, no matter who you are, you are hearing this word, this is your moment of escape. The rock of escape has come, Jesus himself. They call that place the rock of escape. David had no way to go. Did he have the capacity to fight the army of Saul, the best of the best? He did not. Did he have trained soldiers to fight with him? He didn't have. And David has spent just a few years in the army with Saul. So it's not as if at that point he had become an expert in war. He had not. When you are destitute of everything, when you are destitute of ammunition, when you are destitute of the methods and methodologies of fighting for yourself. And anyway, if you knew the fight, that's one other thing. Because so much of the fight that comes against us as human beings, we know nothing about them but God, the rock of escape. That is why it's important to be a child of God. So that when you can do nothing for yourself, God shows up. I like what the scripture says about the disciples when Jesus had died, and they were afraid of everything. They locked themselves up in a room. And he says, when all the doors were shut, Jesus appeared. 
when all hope is lost, God is there. When you can't see the way forward, God opens a way for you. In that situation of utter confusion, there's a way out. And it's with God. And that's why the scripture says there's no tribulation that comes to you that God has not already provided a way out. Can you listen to God? There is a way out. David was up that mountain with his crowd. You can imagine the prayer in the heart of David because this is a worse situation. You can't even shout as per prayer. You shout, you are exposing your position and endangering yourself. So David would have been praying in his heart, Father, help me. I have no help but you. The people that I'm seeing down here, they are more than me. Number one, they are better armed than me. And they are not in any way ready to spare, even a fly. They are coming for total destruction. Father, help me. I don't have a way out. That's the kind of prayer I would like somebody to pray if you find your position as destitute. But let's assume that you are not entirely destitute. You need the rock of escape. There are too many things in life that are happening that you don't even know about. Talk less of the ones that you know about so that you have a way out. I am talking about the way out. That's the rock of escape. What was his way out? God arranged a different thing to take him away. God is going to arrange something for that person to be removed from there, for that person not to become your problem any longer. Because we are sometimes in an office and there is somebody who wants you down by all means. But I want to tell you today, child of God, you are not going down anywhere. God is rising up for you now, even as you are hearing this word. Even when they have closed off everything, Saul was absolutely sure that he's going to get David. But you know the intensity of the word that came to him? Foreigners have taken over your kingdom. He had to run away. God is going to send something. At a certain point, the scripture says God sent a rumor. And by that rumor, the one that was supposed to invade the land ran away. If God has to send a rumor to that your enemy or whoever they are, God will send the rumor now. You are hearing this word? Link your spirit up with the word. Link your spirit up with God. Because God is going to do something very different for you. God will send a rumor. And by that rumor, that person, those persons, those entities, those powers, those communities, those families, those siblings, those parents, whoever they are that are at enmity with you, and whoever they are that have risen up against you, and whatever powers they may be that want to do you in, God will send a rumor now, and they will turn back. But the rock of escape is sure. By the rock of escape, you are gone. As the scripture would say, we have escaped as a bird. You know, they set the trap for the bird, and they were ready to catch the bird. The bird actually flies into the trap. But by God's special providence, the trap somehow, for one split second, lets the bird go. Yes, the trap still clips back, bam, but the bird is gone. You are that bird that is gone. You are not in that trap any longer. Whatever prison it was, you have been removed. I am going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. We face so many kinds of prisons, locked up situations. We see the things that are coming against us. And sometimes it creates so much fear, and you have said, fear not. I pray for my brothers that fear does not engulf them, but that they focus on you, knowing that you are the rock of escape. They focus on you, knowing that there is a way out by you. And by you, everyone would triumph. And Lord, everyone that hears this word, everyone that is following you, desiring solution from you, everyone that is panting after you for life, everyone that is even shouting loudly or inwardly for deliverance, they receive deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being the rock of escape. And thank you for bringing everybody out victorious, not consumed, not destroyed but celebrating your goodness. Thank you, O oh Lord, the rock of escape.
in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.